Vicious. I do, yeah. I smashed me ankle because of that song. How come? Dancing. Fell off me fucking platforms. <laughs> you wore platforms? Once. Bought the fucking things that day. Executing one of me dance moves in the kitchen on the kitchen floor and gone. Jesus, man. The fucking pain. Still gives me grief. Still gives me grief when the weather's damp. Great song, but no argument. That whole album, Transformer, one of the best. Walk on the wild side, he shaved his legs and became a she. When you heard words like that when you're a teenager, in the early 80s, in the early 70s, like, did you ever shave your legs? No, decided against. Same here, how's the ankle? Fucking killing me. <laughs> there. See, Shirley Temple died. There's a thing. What? Shirley Temple. There was a fella in my class in primary school. Curly hair, loads of it like, and a baby face. Mind you, we all had baby faces. We were only fucking six or something. But the teacher, a right fucking monster, I can't remember her name, but anyway, she called him Shirley Temple, and it stuck. The poor cunt. All his life. Did he die? Today? No. Same as Shirley. Same day. Not sure about the time. Yeah, he was always called Shirley, and he went bald in his thirties. Hang on, that Shirley. Is she a man? <laughs> Different one. You're barking up the wrong Shirley. That Shirley just shaves her head. It's a lifestyle choice. Now. You wouldn't have known this lad. He moved to England somewhere to get away from being called Shirley. That and a job like. Come here, bud. Shirley Temple. The real one, like. The original one. You know, all those films. The little dresses and on the good ship lollipop and that. But it was fucking weird, wasn't it? Very fucking weird. <laughs> See, Christine Buckley died. Saw that. Sad. Very sad. Great woman. Great fucking woman. What was the name of that place where she exposed, she exposed the abuse? Golden Bridge. That's it. Hard to imagine a place with a name like that could be so fucking evil, isn't it? I know what you mean. You'd, ex you'd kind of expect hobbits in a place like Golden Bridge. Called Golden Bridge. Yeah, that was the problem, wasn't it? If the place had been run by hobbits, they'd have looked after the poor little kids properly. A bit of love in that, not like the fucking nuns battering them. It's nearly 20 years. What? Since that programme Christine Buckley was in. Are you serious? Yeah, 1996. Said it on the radio. Is the country any better, do you think? Well, if it is, it's because of Christine Buckley and them. I met her once, did you? Corner of Mary Street and Jervis Street. She was standing there like she was waiting for someone. And I knew I knew her, but I didn't know her. Do you know what I mean? I knew her face, and I said, are you? And she goes, that's right, Diana Ross. And she bursts out <laughs> of <laughs> See, Bob Hoskins is after time. Sad that. Hadn't seen him in anything for a while. He mustn't have been well. No, he was one of the lads, wasn't he? Brilliant. Just his face, his expressions, you know. Fabulous. From the very beginning, fucking way back. Pennies from heaven. Do you remember that one? I do, yeah, brilliant. Your one Gemma Craven was in it as well. I used to like her. She was Irish, wasn't she? We won't hold that against her. Mona Lisa. There's no way she was fucking Irish. The film. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. I didn't like Roger Rabbit. No, I know what you mean. He was an irritating cunt. Hot, but Hoskins was good. Can't think of a bad one he was in. Because he was in them. Probably, yeah, good point. The best book. The Long Good Friday. Ah, Jesus. Magnificent. Do you remember the end in the car? When he knows he's fucked, his face, yeah, brilliant. He was frightened, grand, but he looked nearly happy as well, impressed that they'd snared him. Do you think he looked like that uh, this time, when he knew he was dying? Yeah, I hope so. Me too. See, Rick May all died. Sad. Desperate. Younger than us. Remember the young ones? Ah, oh, for fuck's sake, there was nothing like it. His name's Rick. The P is silent. Best line ever. I always associate the young ones with my first video. Yeah, yeah. They both came at about the same time, didn't they? I'd take the young ones and watch it when I got home. There was once, when I got the video, like, a chap in work gave me a dodgy one. Debbie does. Dallas. No. Dungarvan. It was Irish made. Made me proud. It's fucking rough, I'll tell you. But anyway, I came in and my ma was in the kitchen and she was, she was staying a few days. She only lived around the corner. Yeah, but my dad was howling at the moon. Grand. So she says, you said you'd take Coronation Street for me. 
And I thought, oh, bollocks, she's after seeing Debbie. Oh, Jesus. No, it's grand. I'd take the young ones over, Corrie. I made her watch it with me, and the kids all got up to see because she was laughing so much. That's nice. It is, isn't it? And um, this is the encore. Two more recent ones that didn't make it into the book. Uh, another dead one. See Robin Williams killed himself. Hard to believe. Yeah. To accept, like. Yeah. Mork and Mindy. Hated it. Me too. Fucking hated it. Nanu. Fucking Nanu. <laughs> Load of shite. Of course, we didn't know he was a comedian. Not back then, no. No, no videos or internet. We had no idea he was fucking brilliant. Then, do you remember Good Morning Vietnam? Good morning, Viet! Shut up for fuck's sake, you get us far. <laughs> Vietnam! Great fucking film. But it wouldn't have been great if he hadn't been in it. That's true. Mrs. Doubtfire. Class. I ended up fancying him a bit. <laughs> <laughs> only in the film. Of course, yeah, only when he was a woman. <laughs> he was in some great films and a lot of that weren't crap only because he was in them. The best but. Have you seen Happy Feet? Ah, Jesus. Lovelace. No, the other one. He played two different penguins. Ramon. Let me tell something to you. <laughs> Brilliant. Let me tell something to you. You nearly have him. I watch it with the grandkids. Jesus, once a week. All that happiness. But he didn't want to live anymore. Let me tell something to you. <laughs> and the last one. <clears throat> You're looking a bit pale. The fucking ice bucket challenge. <laughs> what? One of the grandkids challenges me. Grand. So I go out. I'm really messed up there. So I go out the back and wait for me drenching. But you know those freezer bags with for ice cubes? Yeah. They drop six of those. Rock fucking solid like from an upstairs window. Right onto my fucking head. I'm out cold. Jesus. They get me into the van, straight up to Beaumont. I wake up when they knock me head off the path outside of A&E. And inside, it's the fucking Alamo, full of ice bucket casualties. There's a cunt with his head stuck in a bucket. There's 13 women who have had heart attacks. There's a kid who's allergic to water. Fucking stay them. There's a lad who's attempted suicide because no one challenged him and he feels left out. Fucking hell. So I'm sitting there, groggy-like, and this sham asks if he can go ahead of me. He's after cutting four of his fingers off. He holds up a spar bag, full of fingers like. I ask him, did he do it for charity? He says no, so I tell him to fuck off. <laughs> sometimes a bit disturbing almost. Uh, the one great thing about it, I'd, I, I have to say, is that when I opened the account, and I opened the account for research for my last novel, my car character in my, the main character in my last novel needed a Facebook account. So I opened one up, and within a few days I had friend requests from people I used to teach, and uh, hundreds of them, eventually. And that's been nice, you know. When, when you're a teacher for 14 years, you tend to forget that when the, you know, the 18-year-olds and 17-year-olds walk out for the last time, that they continue to exist. <laughs> and it's been amazing just even seeing visually, you know, they're all over the world, and a lot of them are still living in the area where Kilbarrick, where I used to teach and where I lived. And so that, I would, I would say, if there was a reason to keep it, if there was one reason, from my personal point of view, to keep the account, it would be that, really. Um, but a lot of it is very dodgy, very strange. And, uh, uh, you know, some twat in California is pleading with the Scottish people to vote Jess, as if they need him, <laughs> you know. Um, so, um, but overall, you know, should it exist or shouldn't it exist? Uh, yeah, yeah, it should. So thanks for confirming my friend request. Yeah. <laughs> One of my ex-students, I believe, yeah. yeah. You found your, I must have taught you geography because you found your way here without <laughs> Yes. How are you? Another one. 
Is there anyone in the room who I didn't teach? <laughs> the inspiration behind those two guys because it kind of reminds me of my father and his best mates in the Cedars on a, on a Friday night. So where, where did you, what inspired you? Well years ago I was probably watching your father <laughs> because I used to drink in the Cedars myself occasionally. I don't know exactly what happened but when the Queen was here, followed quickly by Obama, there was a sense of elation, giddy silliness in the country as if we turned the corner economically because Obama tasted a pint. <laughs> uh, we were on the mend. And I just imagined two men, I, I quickly imagined them as a little bit older than myself, a few years just older than myself, so I, I wouldn't become one of them, so to speak. And uh, I just imagined them talking about it and their take on it. And I didn't give them much thought, really, uh, individually. Uh, I've never given them names. I've been doing it now for more than four years, and I, I've never, I deliberately have never named them. But it was just that, like a lot of ideas, just popped into my head. And I, I put it up on Facebook and figured out how to get a photograph and to upload that because I hadn't a clue or download it, I don't know which. And then, you know, I was really chuffed at myself that I was able to do it. And then the responses were terrific. So I, I can't remember, <coughs> something happened a week or so later and I just decided, well, I'll do that again and see how it goes. And uh, I just stuck with it, you know. I enjoy it, you know. It's, uh, it's, it's um, if I have a full day working at home, I tend to divide my day into different projects anyway. I couldn't, unless there's a mad rush to finish something, I wouldn't be able to concentrate on writing a novel or a short story. So uh, I'm able to do this and just, you know, stick it up there immediately. And it's a good, um, I, 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 very early on I said I won't go past 200 words. It'll always be 200 words. So that in itself is a good exercise, you know, it's a good reminder. So a first draft might be 310 words and I'll spend 10 minutes maybe cutting it down to the 200. But I won't allow myself to put it up unless it's 200. And uh, if I was ever teaching, you know, creative writing, that might be something I would do because I think it's quite a good skill. So uh, I just enjoyed it, really. And gradually they kind of... I don't know if they've grown, actually. I think they're more or less exactly as they were, the first one, you know. And they have countless children and grandchildren. One of them has met his wife at most at gigs most of the people who die, the rock stars who die, he's been at their gigs and he met his wife at those gigs. I think he's met her at at least five different gigs. You know? and so there's an inconsistency to it, but I like that as well. I, I kind of imagine them living in their own little universe and actually it may not really be on earth at all. Why didn't you give them names? Why deliberately? Well, at first it was an accident. I never got around to it. But then I deliberately didn't because I wasn't... I didn't want to be too precise about them. I didn't want them to suddenly live in a definite house or be a definite age and restrict them to five kids and seven grandkids or something like that. So I just deliberately left it uh, man one, man two, really. And I've never done that before because I've really named characters. Just for the heck of it, I'd, I'd normally name characters immediately, even temporarily. I'd give them a name because it seems to give them flesh, so to speak. But I deliberately went against that this time round. Again, I didn't feel I was... Uh, at first I didn't, I didn't, I had no idea it would end up in, in the covers of the book. So I just thought, seeing as it's all dialogue, uh, I thought this particular dialogue, it would be a shame if I called one of them Ben, for example, you know, just put in Ben now and again. I think it would probably lessen it somehow, I'm not sure. Yeah? Are you going to have a chat about the Roy King book? Not really. Yeah. Oh, it's out on the 9th of October, so yeah, be, I'm sure there'll be lots of chat when it comes out. But I don't feel a burning need to chat. Where <laughs> <laughs> are they going to have a chat about? Who? The two guys. Oh, right. oh, there, you know, probably not. <laughs> probably be wise. <laughs> <laughs> but then wisdom and myself don't always go hand in hand. So. But no, I wouldn't imagine so. Unless something happens, you know, something. You never know what's, you know, you never, you can never know what's going to happen, so, but, no, it wouldn't be a plan, you know, no, maybe, no. <laughs> are the two guys here now? Sorry? Are the two guys here now? In so the, they, the yeah. Only as far as I'm here. Yeah. And I am. I mean, they would, there would be something on Facebook tomorrow or the about next this? day. About this? No. Okay. No, no, no. No, definitely. <laughs> Sorry.
Uh, you reference a lot of radio in your stories there. Yeah. And when you're at home all day, or where are you getting ideas from the radio? Are you listen to radio? Or well, I listen to the radio in the morning or? and in the evenings, and sometimes I time, uh, if I'm hungry and I go down for lunch, I have to make a cup of coffee, I time it so I'll hear 10 minutes of Joe Duffy, see what the country's outraged about. <laughs> uh, but I don't listen to radio during while I'm working, no. Get in the way, I can't. I wouldn't, concentrate, wouldn't be able to concentrate. But, um, there's something in the air. I think if you never listen to radio, never read a newspaper, never watch television, you still know reasonably well what's going on in the world. I don't know how. But um, I remember when I was a teacher, I knew exactly what was going on in, uh, it wasn't home in a way, it was the other one, Neighbours. I knew what was happening in Neighbours. I knew the names of all the characters, but I've never actually seen it. <laughs> Yeah. Are you going to keep um, writing them? Is it like a habit? Helps you write other things now? Or no, no. I, I'll keep writing them as long as I enjoy it. Uh, there was a phase. I there was a phase earlier in the year where I stopped because I wasn't enjoying it, and then something happened, and I thought, ah, I'll do that. And I, now and again, I started getting messages on Facebook saying, "Why didn't you do one about this? <laughs> you know, why aren't they talking about you know it was some political issue?" And then I thought, "Well, people are going to start." You know, demanding that I write about this, I think I'll just go. But, uh, no, then I copped on and realised, no, it's mine to do with what I will. So I'll do it as long as I enjoy it. But I'd imagine, like most things, if you have, you know, the, the one about the Facebook challenge, that's not the last one, but I think it was one of the last ones I did, and it had oh, twice as many likes as any previous one. I don't know, I, I wouldn't measure the world in likes, because if you put up the word Syria, Hundreds of people will just, oh, like, without even knowing what it's, you know, do we like Syria as it is, or do we want Syria, Syria somehow different? Like seems to be the response. So uh, I, I don't know if that's the way to measure things, but if we measure it in the Facebook world in terms of likes, it's way the most popular of any of them. And that's a very recent one. Uh, Did so, you get nominated? Sorry? Did you get nominated? For what? The Facebook challenge. Oh, I did, yes, yeah, several times. Yeah. <laughs> Easy to resist, I thought. <laughs> yeah, <no, he's> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, the two lads are kind of of an age. Would it be feasible or, or as authentic to maybe lock a generation or two off to them to kind of try and write the same interaction with younger men, or is, is that type of club interaction? Do you mean another a different younger men? Two different younger men? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I used to do that when I was younger. <laughs> but I mean, one of the good, one of the only thing, the only good thing about getting older is that if you're a writer, it's like research; you can use it. So. Um, if I made them 30-something, I'd probably have a better stab if they were teenagers or in their 20s, but if they're 30-something or 40-something, I'm in a foreign world, I haven't a clue. I really haven't a clue. And not only that, I'm not really interested. I'm quite content enough, barring the fact that I'd be dead before you, probably. Um, I'm quite content at my own age. And so, uh, the men aren't me, but very sometimes the angle they look at the world is the angle of a man, of, of, I, I suspect of my age and people I know. So, um, no, I wouldn't be tempted to make them younger. That would be somebody else's job. You know, but, but I'm just happy enough with them as they are. And I suspect, if, if I was still doing it years down the line, I suspect they'd probably be roughly the same age. You know, I think I'll probably keep them at about the same age. Yes? Is it all spontaneous? To call it by, do you have all these by your wife or somebody no. else? It's a, it's no, no, I just no, do it. Just straight. Yeah, quite often I'll have written it um, if I'm walking somewhere. I'm involved in a, a centre, a writing centre for children called Fighting Words. Mm -hmm. It's about a 40 minute walk from my house. And if I'm walking home and I've decided I'll do one, I'll often have it composed in my head when I get home. And I'll type it out then, and it might be, it's usually a bit long, and I'll trim it and then post it. But no, I've never run it past anybody. No, I think again that would. Like workshop and you know it would, yeah. it would make it work if that makes sense and I, I like the spontaneity of it. Yeah, it sounds really spontaneous. Hmm? It sounds like I'm eavesdropping at a bar, a conversation you know between two guys. Yeah, I mean, the pint at the bar. way 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 back, I remember a rather scathing review of my second novel, The Snapper, where the review suggested that I was going around bars tape recording people's conversations <laughs> as if I, you know, I know, but. I, you know, the, the absurdity of it, that I wandered the pubs of Dublin waiting till I heard two young women talking about one of them being pregnant. 
Oh great, do you mind if I put my microphone here? It was just so ludicrous. So in a, in a way it was a backhanded compliment. Absolutely. So um, no, I don't eavesdrop on people's conversations at all. 99% um, of people's conversations are not worth listening to. <laughs> they are if you're in, they are if you're in the conversation. Yeah. You know? I'm going to meet friends tonight and there'll be nothing going around that'll be of any interest, in, but we will be endlessly fascinating. <laughs> any more? Last chance. Okay, that's thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.